Fortnite doing what Battlefront 2 couldn't. I know that's a bit of a bold statement and it definitely doesn't apply to all aspects of the game, but recently I jumped into Fortnite to check out all the new Star Wars stuff that they added and I actually had a lot of fun and it really really made me miss Battlefront 2 and realize how much that game had potential that wasn't utilized. So that's what I want to talk about today. What is Fortnite doing right and what could Battlefront 2 or another future Star Wars game doesn't even have to be Battlefront do better. Before we get into that, a quick shout out to my sponsor Elgato. They recently released their Facecam Pro, the world's first 4K 60 USB web camera. So you can now finally get that professional 4K quality, the same as a, like a DSLR, but with a USB cam. So if you're interested in that or any other of all their products they have for content creators, make sure to follow the link in the description below. But now, let's talk a little bit about Fortnite and Battlefront 2, and Star Wars games in general. So first a little bit of a backstory about me and Fortnite. I'm not really a big Fortnite fan overall, it's not really my type of game, at least it wasn't until they removed the building. I played it back when they released it, I think that was 2017 or something like that, and then I kind of got bored of it, especially the building part, and I preferred games like, well, Battlefront 2, obviously, and if I wanted a battle royale, I would play something that was a bit more like Warzone. But earlier this year, they had a really cool drop with Obi-Wan Kenobi and Darth Vader, and they removed the building at the same time, so I thought I'd give it a go, and I genuinely enjoyed it because it's not really like Battlefront, but it was a shooter which I've always enjoyed. Plus, they now had some cool Star Wars stuff. And not just the cosmetics, mostly cosmetics, but the fact that you could actually find Vader on the map, fight him, get his lightsaber and whatnot, added some nice depth to the gameplay as well. Also, a super quick note, I just noticed when editing this video that they just brought back all Star Wars items to the Fortnite shop today. So if you guys are looking to pick up any of the drops you've missed before, make sure to check that out and feel free to use my creator code BF updates if you want to support the channel when you're buying any of the skins. Thank you. And now recently they added a bunch of more Star Wars stuff, both Leia, Han and Luke. So I decided to hop on the stream the other day and I had a couple of viewers join me and, and we absolutely destroyed. We got like three wins in a row despite me being a bit of a Fortnite noob and we played across different platforms and servers. And I had so much fun, something I had really missed in Battlefront, like jumping on and playing Battlefront with a couple of friends was great fun but we haven't had anything new for so long that that excitement is kind of gone even if I still play the game. I mean, Fortnite has just become this perfect game for like all franchises and kinds of players because it's available on PC, console, Switch, you can play cross-platform and they do stuff with Star Wars, Marvel, Rick and Morty, manga, they do stuff with so much franchises which is great. That being said that means it's not a dedicated Star Wars game, if you just want a Star Wars experience it might not be the thing for you. But I still had a lot of fun with it and the main thing I want to get to here with what Fortnite is doing that Battlefront 2 failed to do, it's a proper long-term plan for content. Battlefront 2 launched with a long-term plan for content, which was loot boxes. And when those loot boxes were scrapped, there was no longer a long-term plan. It shifted from being, oh we can make quite a lot of money from this game while delivering content to the players to, oh shit. We screwed up, now we can't make any money from this game, but we can make content that people want just to build up our reputation again, since that was obviously the lowest it's probably ever been since the loot box fiasco. So for two years, we did have an amazing live service, to be honest, or the first year was really slow, but after that initial period, we had two years of solid live service, fantastic content where the developers poured their passion into the game and really focused on just giving the players what they wanted, but they didn't make any money of it. Which is why there was no long-term plan, they simply did it out of goodwill to make sure that the game ended up in a good place. I do know from speaking to them, there were some long-term ideas, but obviously DICE management and EA probably mostly decided, nah, we're done with this, we're gonna pour it all into Battlefield, and well, we all know what happened with that. Plus, after that, the majority of the Battlefront developers left, and I don't blame them for doing so. Whereas Fortnite, they have a solid system. Sure, the skins might be expensive, but you don't need the skins if you don't want to. I have not seen many complaints at all about the pricing in Fortnite or the way the battle pass works, because first of all, the game is free. 
So you can really play everything in Fortnite without paying a single dime. But if you really enjoy a game, you usually want to spend money on the game. I remember when Battlefront 2 was at its peak, me and so many others were like, give us something we can pay for. There's literally nothing to spend money on. If they were to do a big ass expansion for 20 bucks, I'd pay for it, no problem. If they did some insane skins, I'd pay for it, no problem. But we never ever had a chance to even support the game and the developers even if we wanted to because crystals were pointless you could buy all the skins for the in-game credits you earned so that's where battlefront 2 really went wrong because they had that initial plan on how to support the game i do know that a lot of people don't like when i talk about making money off games but if you're realistic games aren't a charity i'm not saying you should have any type of predatory microtransactions like the loot boxes in battlefront 2 or in many other games but you need to have that middle ground where the developers can actually get paid for their work but the players still get something fair if they spend money on the game and that's where battlefront 2 failed miserably and that's also why they shut down the game they could probably still have made it work if they got the commitment from dice and ea but it seems like they were just happy with the fact that they fixed the game and then they could just throw it aside despite the immense potential of a star wars game pumping out content with all the new series, movies, comics, books coming out. And since there hasn't been a replacement, I still don't understand that decision. If they had another live service game that maybe Respawn or really any other studio were working on that would basically take over after Battlefront, then I would totally have understood that. But now it's just such a waste. And it makes me kind of sad to feel like the best active Star Wars game right now is Fortnite even if it's not even a Star Wars game. But that's the reality we live in right now. And now that we have eight plus games in the works, all seemingly single player, I don't know if we will ever get a game like Fortnite or Battlefront 2 to give us the Star Wars content we want ever again. But well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave some feedback below as that's much appreciated and drop a like as well. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, may the force be with you.